You're watching No More News. There have been at least a dozen Jewish rabbis that have said the Messiah is on earth now. He's been identified. He is soon going to make himself known. Drum roll, please. We present the actual voice of Jared Kushner. He has been seen but not heard. Silently watching President Trump sign orders, Jared Kushner is usually in the middle of the action, but publicly mom. Well, thank you very much, Rudy. Jared Kushner can speak. He actually talks. He says Trump's kept his promises. I want to play some of these historic clips, though, of uh, Jared Kushner. He speaks. He actually spoke uh, from there at the dedication of the embassy that opens today. In fact, I heard never do this. I'm going to play Kushner twice. Wow, why hasn't Kushner been speaking? He looks pretty authoritative, looks strong. Got a nice gleam in the eye. Sounds nervous, but hey, man, get over it, bro. You, you come off strong. In the Jewish mindset, for the Messiah to arrive, you can't think of him like we think of Messiah. We think of Messiah after the model of Jesus. He's the son of God, divine birth, all of that. That's not the way the Jews look at the Messiah. They're looking for a king. They're looking for a political leader. As a matter of fact, Messiah to them means the anointed one. And it goes back to the ancient days when they would anoint a king and recognize him as this is the man that God sent. I'm not saying that they think he is the Messiah. What I actually think is that most of the rabbis there think he's John the Baptist and the Messiah is about to appear. He's the forerunner. He's the guy that's going to start the message in the wilderness and the Messiah is going to come in on his heels. elect Trump's secret weapon, Forbes magazine <clears throat> trumpeting on their cover. The man they credit with Donald Trump's victory, the president-elect's own son-in-law, Jared Kushner. Trump's victory, everybody admits that Trump is a marketing genius, but so is Jared Kushner. He did a lot of stuff that really helped marketing Trump, changing his brand, if you will, from a TV star businessman to a president. By the way, Teal was a supporter of Trump. Eric Schmidt, the former Google CEO, was not a supporter of Trump, but he recognized Jared Kushner's genius. He said, Jared Kushner is the biggest surprise of the 2016 election. Best I can tell, he actually ran the campaign and did it with essentially no resources. Yeah, that was really, uh, that really, that was the most, that was the most shocking, the most shocking, the most shocking thing in the story, that Eric, uh, Eric Schmidt, big backer of Hillary, and also helped them, her build her, her tech machine. If, she, if he's saying this is a big deal, watch this, this Kushner guy, I knew I had a story. Well, the way Jared did it was really taking the Trump campaign, dealing with it as if it was a business enterprise. And Despite having no experience in politics or government, Jared Kushner is said to be one of Donald Trump's most trusted advisors. Some analysts call him the Trump whisperer. They too believe that we are in the end times. They too believe that the Messiah is about to appear. We would say the second coming is about to happen, but their Messiah is going to be a false Messiah. He's going to be the Antichrist, right?
And so we need the temple service. We need to get back into Israel, the Messiah. Now, why are they saying that? They have identified somebody. I mean, I, there could be a few rabbis there that think he's the Messiah. The smart ones in Israel are looking at him right now. They're saying he is God's what we would call John the Baptist. He is God's messenger. When he takes over in January, there is a 5777 countdown to the appearance of the Messiah, and something could happen overnight that could lead to the reconstruction of the temple. A lot of the um, scholars that I've spoken to uh, talk about how the building of this next temple is really going to bring peace to Israel and to bring safety from all her, her enemies. And so in that way, I can see that um, any maybe leader that would be raised up or somebody that would be able to bring the nations together, especially those who might align with Israel, that there might be some agreement that, that, that the temple could exist there and this person could be set up in the temple. What we know is that's probably going to be a false messiah, because as we read in the book of Daniel, that there's a false messiah that's going to uh, make a peace agreement. And so that's the, the potential is that something would be built for the false messiah to set himself up. no administration over the course of four decades has been able to solve the Arab-Israeli conflict. Barak says with a new set of leaders in the Arab world wanting a solution, the timing is right. One of the crucial assignments Donald Trump already has in mind for his son-in-law, bringing peace to the Middle East. He'll make a deal with Israel that no one else can. You know, he's a natural, Trump told the Times of London. President Trump declared that his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, could broker the toughest deal in the world, lasting peace between Israelis and Palestinians. Jared Kushner plans to travel to the Mideast on Wednesday to jumpstart a U.S.-led peace effort. Kushner will spearhead the push for negotiations between the Israelis and Palestinians. As President Trump's senior advisor, Jared Kushner is tasked with, among other things, trying to bring peace to the Middle East after defeating ISIS. A White House official says Kushner who joined Mr. Trump on his recent trip to the Middle East will hear directly from Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. President Trump was in Israel just last month and talks have been continuing since then. Now he's asked his son-in-law to take the lead as the conversation continues. I am committed to trying to achieve a peace agreement between the Israelis and the Palestinians. The president believes forging a historic peace agreement is possible and believes his son-in-law is especially fit to achieve it. He is so great. If you can't produce peace in the Middle East, nobody can. The president's advisor and son-in-law, Jared Kushner, is playing a key role in shaping Trump administration foreign policy. Jared Kushner has really emerged as a quiet force in the Trump White House. He serves as a main conduit with foreign contacts in Mexico, China, Canada, among others. 36-year-old Jared Kushner has no diplomatic experience, but he's become an envoy to foreign leaders, at times in place of the Secretary of State. President Trump's son-in-law and senior advisor is in Iraq tonight. Jared Kushner was invited along by the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff to get a first-hand look at the fight against ISIS. And this trip really shows that he's taking a more active role in the Middle East issues that are on his agenda, and there are many, including trying to broker peace between the Israelis and Palestinians. James? It's a big portfolio. Finessing the strained relationships with Mexico and working with the Canadian government are also Kushner projects. Kushner has been pivotal in shaping the U.S.'s relationship with Mexico. Jared Kushner led the Mexican foreign minister into the Oval Office where they talked to President Trump and they advised him to tone down his rhetoric about Mexico. And he's now running a newly created office to integrate business ideas into the government. Critics say Kushner, an Orthodox Jew, is pushing Trump toward a more hardline stance on Israel. Israel. When it comes to Israel in the Middle East, the stakes are especially high, and for Kushner, it's also personal. Matthew Miller, better known by his Hebrew stage name Matish Yahu, burst onto the music scene in 2004 as something of a novelty. An observant Orthodox Jew who sang reggae songs about his faith. He says his music is a reflection of his spirituality. And he got involved with the Hasidic Chabad Lubavitch movement. Not only got involved, he says, but jumped into it full force. 
Matis Yahu moved to Crown Heights, Brooklyn, where the Chabad Lubavitch movement is headquartered. And he entered a yeshiva, where he spent his weekdays in intensive study of the Torah. He says he was inspired by the beauty he found in the text. Matis Yahu began performing those songs and became a sensation. The reggae singer with the orthodox black hat and coat. The religious themes in his lyrics were numerous and overt. His top 40 hit, King Without a Crown, incorporates Chabad's belief that the coming of the Messiah, Moshiach, is near. The song's chorus is explicit, I want Moshiach now. I want to tell the Rebbe the words of the new song that we're singing with Mashiach, right? So I'm just going to read him. Am Yisrael, have no fear. Mashiach will be here this year. We want Mashiach now. We don't want to wait. Okay? Jared is a great young man, went to Harvard, very smart, went to Harvard, very smart. Thank <laughs> אבל יש עוד כמה שעות, שעות, אבל יש לי שתדים גם היום. Can I reveal, Jared, how long we've known you? <laughs> well, he, he was never small, he was always big. <laughs> he was always tall, but I... The, the relationship between Israel and America is stronger than ever, and we really thank Prime Minister Netanyahu for his leadership and his partnership. <laughs> 